Hey everyone, my name is Sabono Isaac Berry from Berry Science Lab, and today I'm here to teach you the difference between period and frequency and what they both are anyway. So, and by the way, if you think I've stooped down from my original level, this is aimed towards like 5th to ninth graders. So, what are periodic things first? You might see this word and think, hmm, periodic. I've definitely heard that before, but where? Well, let's think about, for example, drums. In music, uh, you might hear someone describe something as being 120 beats per minute. So, what does that mean? Well, isn't a minute 60 seconds? Wouldn't that mean that if we have 120 beats in 60 seconds, then that's two beats every second? So, wouldn't it look a little bit like this? So, that is periodic. As in, there is an equal interval of time between every beat. Now, what is that interval of, of time? Well, if we reduce this even more, you will probably notice that that means we have one beat every half of a second. Do you see something? This is what we call frequency, and this is what we call the period. Well, what does that mean? No, this length, well, no. This amount of time is half a second, this amount of time is half a second, so on and so forth. So, here, the period is just measuring uh, how uh, how long it takes for one beat? Long for one beat. Or you could say seconds per beat. And frequency is really uh, how many beats in one second. And that would be beats per second. I think you see a pattern here. Do you see it? Yes, frequency is 1 divided by time and the reverse. So, now let me demonstrate to you another better example than just a song. So, let's say... Uh, this is Subo. Well, actually, I'm not very good at running. So let's say this is my brother, Rifath, and he's running all the way around this track. I don't really care how long the track is. Uh, wavelength will be gotten to in another video. So I will actually make the dot right here. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a wall right over here. Now, why am I doing that? Well, I'll show you. Because here is where a very nice function emerges. Let's erase this arrow for a second. So, what I'm going to do is basically just project this fella's position onto this wall. We do not care about his horizontal position here, only his vertical position. And let's say he's moving at constant velocity. So, for example, uh, that means that he covers an equal amount of distance every single second. Just like we covered an equal amount of time. So, let's say this is how much he covers in one second. Then Refast covers this much in the next second. And then this much. And then this much and then this much, and then this much. So, now, let's project all those points onto this line right over here. So, this is one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. And now, let's uh, draw a graph. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
I'm sure one of you two sees where I'm going here. Wow. Okay. I really expected more from you, Rufus. This point right onto this line. And now let's redraw this because I'm not Picasso. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, my sing very good. Okay, so now let's project this point onto the line as well. And then this point. And then this point. And then this point. And then this point. And then, point. And then the final. So now let's put all these points in their corresponding places one two three four that forces to be a center five four. and six and now we get the first quarter of a sine curve that forces it to be center Yep. So now we can draw the rest of it. It actually goes off screen because I've messed with the scale a little bit here. But that is where the sine wave comes from. And that's why we uh, like using this, the sine wave, to uh, for a periodic motion. You might be saying, why don't we use this? There's actually a name for this. I think it's called the sharp wave. Or why don't we use this? A square wave. Or why don't we use this? Well, this is the answer. This is actually a real graph. Don't laugh really fast. Oh, geez. Oh, just getting booty again. So, now... We draw this, and here is what we call one cycle. So here, as you can see, we just made it to the top. But what does this point correspond to on the track? What's your answer? Well, actually, no, he already knows. So what's your answer? The top of the track? No, like, uh, let's label these. A, B, C. Which one do you pick? B. What? B, C. Yeah, it's C. Yeah, C. Why would it be B? We already said B corresponds to this point. Are you not paying attention, you Dumbo? And now, as we go back down, we don't return to the starting point, A. We instead go all the way to C. And if we shrink this graph a little bit to show the overall scheme of things, this would be A, this would be B, and this would be C. And now let me show you something. Let's label this D. Then, if you think about it, can I reach this? All right. So let's draw a mini circle here. So this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So now, this corresponds back to D, and this goes back to A. To start the whole cycle again. So, to start the whole cycle again. That's why we call this one cycle. Uh, you can almost think of it like a lap of sorts. So, the period is just how much time it takes for one lap. But the frequency is a little bit harder to imagine in this case. Well, you saw how we went one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we finished one quarter of the whole track, right? Okay. Uh, yes. no, no answer from Dumbo over here, but yes. Yeah. Disappointing, Refast. So that means it would take 24 seconds in total, right? Are yeah, you with yeah. me? All right. So what does that mean? Well, that means that... If I travel at that same constant speed, how much of the track will I cover in one second? How much of the track is this? 124? 
<gasps> Congratulations, you finally got something right for the first time. Yes, 124. So, 124. One over 24 second, actually. Yeah, I know. 124 of the track per second. But, I mean, the track isn't really a unit. So, we can say one second over 24 seconds. So, we have 1 over 24, 1 over second. And we actually have a kind of special name for this called the Hertz. So, the frequency is 1 over 24 Hertz. So, that's the relation between frequency and period. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.